forget rock and roll. He says, look, I have now heard the best voice in the world. He was just like a 12-year-old kid seeing the Beatles. He said, go and find her and tell her I want to sing with her. He was a little shy in the beginning to, to sing with me. He was so nervous that instead of saying, how lovely to meet you, would you like some lunch? He just blurted out, I've written a song for you. Would you like to hear it? I am Montserrat Caballé. I am the voice that sang with Freddie Mercury, the song Barcelona, the song from my city. In May 1983, Freddie's love of opera led him to see Pavarotti singing Verdi in Covent Garden. That night, an unexpected and unforgettable love affair was born. The performance was in Ballo in Mascara, an opera by Verdi. And you thought, what happens? The tenor gets a big aria, sort of almost as soon as he comes on, and Freddie was, oh, no, that's good. Yeah, he, he sings just like he does on the records and things. And then there's a trio comes up with a sort of soprano appears for the first time and it's it's actually some beautiful music we didn't plan it um but it was montserrat who was actually singing i mean he didn't know the name he didn't know anything about her um she came on she sang in that first bit and at sort of the end of her bit, she, his jaw just dropped. Jaw just sort of fell open. He says, look, when did she come back? When is she coming back again? I, I want to hear more of this woman. Um, who, I mean, who is it? And I said, yeah, it's Montserrat Caballé, a Spanish soprano. He says, oh, have you got anything of hers? Have you got any of her recordings? I want to listen to it. I want to hear her. And that was how it all started. excitement one night and he said you never guess what I've had a message to say that Montserrat Caballé <laughs> would like to meet me and he said I'm not going without you I had this perfect dream you always had this dream was me and you I want all the world to see it's amazing I mean I'm going to opera forget rock and roll my guiding inspiration Now my dream is slowly coming true The meeting was arranged for two o'clock The wind is a gentle breeze Freddie's inside pacing up and down, up and down All done up, wonderful suit, looking really good um, so I had to keep an eye out at the door to see when anyone was coming. And about quarter past two, you could see people in the foyer just sort of parting as Montserrat and her party came walking in. It is the room where we first met. He was so cold in his hands. I was very cold too, but I could feel his cold hands and I thought he's cooler than me. He's nervous too, so that's good because when the people are nervous, that means both are expecting something from the other one. They sat down, Freddie and Montserrat were sitting together and all the rest of us were around and for about Two or three minutes, there was just, there was just sort of silence. Um, and then Freddie turned to Montserrat and said, well, I've got a song for you, shall I play it? And that was it. That broke the ice. A piano was in the corner, well prepared. So we stand up from the table and we went to the corner and he was playing and I was beginning to sing. We could go on for hours and hours and hours. So when we finish, we look at each other and I knew it, that he has conquered me. Viva! He was on cloud nine 
Fred, Freddie was up in the sky. He, he, he didn't need a plane to go home. He was just, he was really was so happy. And I just thought, uh, maybe one song or, or a duet and that's it. And she said, um, she said things like, um, um, only one song, are you sure? Uh, you only want to do one song. And I said, well, let's see how we get on, you know, if you like more of my music. And she said, how many songs does a normal rock and roll album have? And I said something like 10. Oh, we'll do 10 songs then. So, um, you know, so she just said, yes, write 10 songs, uh, like tomorrow. was an example of the high musicality of Freddy. It was not only a pop rock singer, it was a musician that could sit on the piano and could compose for me. It's such a challenge, actually. It's, um, it's going to be great because um, I've never sort of thought of writing songs in that way. Now, she said she wants to do duets with me. I have to sort of think in a totally different way. From what I know of Freddie, one of the biggest, biggest, greatest moments in his life was when Montserrat had come over and actually put down her vocal track for Barcelona. Because I remember him turning around to me and saying, after they'd done it, you know, going home from the studio, he just said, that's it, I've done it. I've got her voice on my music. together towards the classic or the classic towards them. It was the first and only person that has done this. saying to me, well, he said, I can't go on stage and do my usual, you know, things because, you know, she's singing, you know, maybe I better tone down the act a bit, you know. And, um, of course, <laughs> what, he, what he'd temporarily forgotten was this was an operatic diva. When she went on stage, she was like a bloody volcano. She just went, Wah! And, and as soon as she started, he looked over at me and thought, bloody hell, I'd better, I've got competition here. So that, and it was actually quite a, a fiery combination. <laughs> After a memorable performance at Covent Garden, Freddie, Montserrat and Mike Moran went back to Garden Lodge and spontaneously improvised around the piano until sunrise. It was a very special night, a very, very special night, a wonderful night that I will never forget. It was so wonderful that we don't realize the time passed so fast and, and then someone says, well, it's almost six. I think well, you have to stop because you have sung a concert and you have... I said, yes, I'm tired, but it's so wonderful. Every five minutes he would say, look, you've got to go home, you've got to catch a flight. She says, oh, you don't want me here. He says, no, I do want you here, but I don't want to get into trouble because you're tired and you're late. You're not tired. You're not, you're not tired now, huh? You must rest a little. You want me to? I'm going. No, 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 I don't want you to go. I, I just, I think, you must rest. I, I come so terrible. You sound, no, I, I can, I can <laughs> sing till wow. six o'clock in the morning. I think it was six o'clock in the morning, when a.m. when I left home and all the people was... In the street was lots of people, you know. Surprised as I spent the night. <laughs> Freddy's home. <laughs> Musicians 
they understand each other very, very well. They marry in music, you know? And this is what was happening with Freddie and with me. I've never sort of thought of writing songs in that way. Now, she said she wants to do duets with me. I have to sort of think in a totally different way. I had this perfect dream. This dream was me and you. I want all the world to see. He loved me a lot. And I loved him too. normal but for me no <laughs> and I told him Freddy listen do you think really I have to perform with you I don't feel like I am old I am big I am I don't know and he says listen music has not age Let the songs begin. Without Queen, I think he was most proud of this. For the opera world, has been a revolution, a real revolution. The actual song Barcelona was absolutely wonderful. I still get goosebumps when I hear it. You know, I've heard it ten thousand times. It was operatic, it was over the top, it was melodramatic, but in many respects it was true opera. He was just beside himself with uh, happiness that, that this was all going to happen. And everything had to be perfect. Uh, there were flowers put in the control room for her arrival. I remember him insisting that the studio there in London redecorate the ladies' bathroom, just in case she might use it. I mean, I don't know. At the moment, it's not out. I don't know what it's going to do to my career, but I know that as far as <laughs> it might go completely down. I don't know. Wow. No, no, no. Well, no, I, I think it, it's just like a dream come true personally, you see. And I think it's going to... It means a lot to me because I've, like, uh, finally done something that I really wanted, is to sing with her. And to me, it's, like, blown my mind, you know. And um, at the moment, I still don't believe it's happening. You know, I have to keep touching her that she's here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think career-wise, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just so proud of the fact that um, I've actually done it, you know. Because I remember when we were actually, um, like, rehearsing and doing things, I still thought it's not happening. And finally, when she recorded, when she came to London and recorded, and I finally got her voice on tape, I thought, now that's it. I've, I've got it, you know. <laughs> And uh, so then, now she, uh, she can't run away. I got the voice. And, um, and I just hope there's some better things to come, you know, because we're going to sort of do some more things. This is just the first one, and wait till you listen to some, some of the others. It was a marvelous moment of my life. This one year together, I will always remember, one of the most surprising, beautiful, and happy of my life. I mean, it was like a distension, like a window open to the world. Many, many people, of young people, come today to the opera. They always say, we wanted so much to find out who is the woman that screams so much with Freddy. We are very thankful to him and to you because this way we have met two worlds coming together for the first time. One day he was saying in front of many friends we were together, says, I love music and she is the music. proposals many times to do it again something with other colleagues and things 
But you know, I has to be has to be something very special that follows Freddie and me together. Very special. The way he was telling me that, you know, I am, I am a zero positive, he says, and I developed the illness. I says, but you are so strong, and you sing like you sing, and, and yes, I still can do it, he says. But it comes a moment no more, and I know that, and I want you to know. Because it's my duty to tell you this. I say it's now, it's not duty. But I am very thankful that you have told me. Because that means I have your friendship. And this is most important as anything to me. The last time this I spoke with him, it was when I was uh, recording an uh, uh, album about... Uh, 25 years of something in I don't remember where <laughs> but I was doing this album for that and he wanted always we have not tried to sing the Phantom of the Opera with me that was one of his dreams and I promised him that I will sing that way and so and I knew it, he was ill in that period, and he was not traveling, and I recorded the aria of the Phantom of the Opera, and I phoned him, and I think took the phone, Peter, I think, and he passed me, and I told him, look, I have just finished it was in the studio to recording the area of the phantom and I have recorded for you I want really to put it for you can you can you let me hear it through the telephone I says yes they put it the area and he was very moved and he sings she says to me it's wonderful it's like I have always dreamed to hear it and thank you very much, Monsi. Thank you. That was the last time I spoke with him, I think. That was about September. That I was doing this recording. And he was no more than November. No?
had this perfect dream. Sueño me volvió. This dream was me and you. To all the world to see Instinct of my guilt A miracle sensation My guiding inspiration 